Hey, welcome back to December 6th edition of Festively Fabulous, <laughs> our craft beer advent calendar opening. So without further ado, let's jump in. Hopefully it won't be as disappointing as last time. Yesterday's was rubbish. If you've not seen yesterday's, I uh, highly recommend watching it. If for no other reason than to hear me go on like a 10 minute tirade about spice. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't get very festive yesterday. Right, so number six is the one where I accidentally knocked the the, uh, the door off, so I know it's this one. Okay, so today we have Ooh. Fordham Route 1 Session IPA. That looks nice. It does indeed look very nice. I'm looking forward to this after the travesty that was... <coughs> shit. <laughs> okay, well I was looking, looking forward to this. Now he's got to wait 10 minutes to open it. Rip. <laughs> yeah. After yesterday, this should be nice. Let's have a look, a quick, quick read the back. I'm going to have to take the glasses off. Oh, so I can it's see. getting serious, the glasses are coming off. Route 1 IPA uses Bravo, Cascade, Chinook, and Crystal Hops for a grapefruit and pine aroma. Mm. Golden in colour and possessing a subtle malt presence, the character of this ale makes it easy to lather, rinse, and repeat as needed. Pairs well with salty and fried foods, curries, and other spicy dishes. Good. Shame we don't have any of those. Rolling up the sleeves. Also, Dark Souls themed Christmas jumper. Still continuing the the Christmas jumper or Christmas apparel theme. What's your Christmas apparel, Amy? <laughs> uh, this. Oh, it's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how we get on. Hopefully there's no beer sand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're unaware of what beer sand is, That's watch yesterday's. <laughs> there was a lot of beer sand. Nice this looks very nice. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it probably looks darker to me. Also, check out the head on mine compared to, the, <laughs> compared to the one on December 1st where it was like this. Yeah, I thought you were going to say compared to mine then. I was going to be like, no. My name's Amy. I've worked in a bar. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. That's actually really nice. That's probably the nice. nicest one we've had. Yeah. It's very... Um... That is how malty and hoppy should be done. Yesterday's was far too hoppy and it completely ruined the maltiness of it. And it just tasted of nothing and then all you got was fizz at the end. That's oh. actually very nice. It's really nice. It's really um, refreshing. That's what to play, I think. It's uh, it tastes similar to uh, Firk and Fox that Badger used to do. Again, Badger, <laughs> you're in the bad books. Just stop axing like all me favourite beers. Rip, rip. They took Golden Glory. They took the Peach Beer away. That's the biggest crime. And and Firk and Fox. Mm. Rip, rip. This is very nice though. It's really nice, it's really refreshing. It's about as nice as you would expect, judging by how posh the bottle looks. That's the best way to describe it. And not a single drop of beer sand. That's the dream. <laughs> that is the dream. <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> so, do you know how we keep saying this and it changes all the time? <laughs> on what Martin Luther King's dream was, mm -hmm. okay. At some point, surely it can't have all been the same dream. Otherwise, you'd have to have been asleep for, for, oh, no, but you have for like a week. You, you don't have the same dream over and over. I, but then you can't say the dream, can you? It would have to be, I have had a dream. Yeah, it doesn't sound as good, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> I like that. It's very nice. I like the bottle as well. Yeah, I it's not it's not overstated. It's just looks quite nice. Hey, I'll have a look. It looks like Red Dead Redemption. I hope. It's just old styly. I see. Yeah, it's very nice. That very nice. Fordham, good job. It's quite it's quite easy to drink. Yeah. Because a lot of the time, even well, it's a session IPA, isn't it? So it's meant to be able to. Mm -hmm. For you to drink multiple and not be 
Too gassy or whatever. Yeah, to be fair, it's it's probably one of the stronger ones that we've had. Yes. Like four point five percent. Yeah. Because that's the thing I, I like. I think the problem sometimes is if you make it too flavorful or too hoppy or too anything, you ruin the ability for you to just drink it, like sequentially over the course of a night. Nice double glasses. It's quite heavy. Sally, Sally, two glasses. It's really heavy, actually. <laughs> what you could do is this. Oh, have you got eyes in the back of your head? Oh. <laughs> But yeah, I could, I could, uh, I could drink that quite easily. Well, the arms is a bit loose on these. You'll have to tighten them. I know up. that's why I pinched yours instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it only took six whole days, but we finally got. Well, actually, that's a lie because the the punk IPA is obviously nice. We're just we're still kind of just underselling that. Day four, I like day four. Yeah, that was okay. I really like day four. See, I wouldn't. I like that, but there's no way I could drink that. In a session, there's there's no way that yeah. like, I can have one or two of them, and it would be I'd end up like really I'd pure like heartburn yeah. and just gassy and not what you want. See, like so far, it's like half and half for me because this is really nice. I really like day four, and I really like day one. Yeah, it's just the two Bowman ales. Sorry, Bowman. And you weren't a fan of the the Goose Island either. Urban wheat beer, not for me. You, you always say urban wheat beer. Because it says that on the bottle. I know, but like... It stuck with me. Honestly. It's just the way you say it makes it sound like part of the reason you don't like it is because it's urban. <laughs> no, it's just... Do you know what I mean? Wheat beer I can handle, but urban wheat beer made in someone's bathtub in, in, in Bradford. No, thank you. <laughs> no, it's just like... It's just like because I've never seen anything like that before. Like if it was I've made never in a farmhouse bathtub in Cornwall, that would be a different story. It's the dream. <laughs> the dream. The dream. <laughs> no, like it's because I've never like I've never heard of that before until we had that beer. I've never heard of like urban wheat beer, <laughs> urban wheat beer before. <laughs> or just wheat beer in general. So like that's why it stuck with me. But also it was disgusting and it just kind of haunts me to this day. I'm kind I've of had I've had other inspired. other wheat beers that are. That I've enjoyed. That was okay. I didn't mind it. It's not the best I've ever had. And like I say, I prefer wheat beer over like sort of wheat stouts. Like me, me mate Brownie, he he loves his stouts. It's all he goes on about. Like we have conversations about like uh, about Stout. beer and stuff, and it usually goes like this. Oh yeah, have you tried this this like cool craft beer? And I go, no, no, I'll have to try that. And like, tell you what I had the other day though. I had this really nice blah blah stuff from blah blah, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll have to try it. And that's pretty much how our conversations go about. <laughs> but yeah, he he delights in telling us that the, he goes to uh, a little craft ale shop Ooh. in uh, I think he said it was Giles Gear called the Hop Knocker. So we will actually have to go sometime and have a look because, uh, you know. Why not? It's a day out and I like beer. I like beer. And I don't particularly mind stout either. It's just sort of, stout's one of those things for me where like, I can, I can have one, I can enjoy one or two. Do you know what I mean? Like I could have one on a night and enjoy it. I could have one now, here doing this and enjoy it. But if I was out, you know, in the pub, I couldn't, I couldn't have more than one. But I'm not sure if that's just because stout's quite heavy, or I went through a phase in my very early 20s where I like literally drank nothing but Guinness, and I think it soured me towards stout. For... <laughs> I don't mind Guinness. I don't really find occasion to drink it though. It's too heavy for me. Yeah, it is very heavy. So I could drink it and have one or two, but then even if I switch to something else, I can't really. Well, yeah. I can't really switch to anything else. See, after that. I, I used to enjoy having a pint of it with like food, but it's all because it's very heavy as well. It means you can't have. A lot of food, food yeah, yeah. It, like really sits on you. So, like if you're having a panini, a, a pint of extra cold Guinness is great. If you're having like you know, steak or something, a carvery or something, do you know what I mean? Just no. It'd be like eating a full meal and then sitting down and having four slices of bread right afterwards. Well, yeah, I mean like stout, you know, that's when people, you know, say you drink your dinner, as if it does fill you up. The uh, I don't know if they still do. I'm pretty sure this is common knowledge as well, but uh, your doctor and that used to tell you to drink Guinness 
after you after you'd been pregnant and you'd had your child. Iron. Because yeah, it's got high iron content and it's good for dealing with uh, post post child anemia. I think I think. Don't quote me on it, but I'm, I'm sure that I've heard something about, like, doctors don't necessarily advocate it, but they do say that, you know, if you want to have a little bit of dark beer when you're pregnant, like, just... You can you can things. have a little bit of anything when you're pregnant. Well, that's not necessarily true. No, a little bit of bleach. No, <laughs> <laughs> you can't do no. that. Please don't do that. <laughs> Any amount of bleach, don't do it. No, but I mean, like... Pregnant or not, don't do it. Like, obviously, things like... Bleach, cigarettes, drugs, you know, no, but like, you know, a glass of red wine here and there isn't going to kill you or harm your child. Do you know what I mean? As long as it's only little. And like all these things that you're meant to, you're not meant to eat, like you're supposed to stay away from like tuna and stuff. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, there is reasonable scientific evidence towards that. But at the same time, like I can't, to me, it seems that that must be the... The very small minority, because 20, 30 years ago, no one knew any of this, and people just ate what they want. I mean, like, look, the thing, I'm 29, do you know what I mean? Do you think 29 years ago, my mum was like, oh, better stay off the tuna, do you know what I mean? And there's some sort of eggs as well that you can't have, I, I can't remember what it is. I think it's just if they're not cooked properly. But, like, you know, I bet my mum was just, like, scrambled eggs, tuna, get in. Sounds like a horrible meal. <laughs> well, maybe not, maybe not together. <laughs> Do you know what like I mean? Mixed up. I love pregnancy cravings, you don't know, do you? True. People want weird stuff when they I've just got a craving. feeling that if I ever get pregnant, I'm going to crave all the things that I absolutely hate to eat. Aye, and then I'm just going to move out if I come home one day and you're just sat there like smashing a load of pickled eggs or something. I'll just leave. Just leave me. <laughs> not, not permanently. Mm. I'll come back once, uh, once, once you've stopped eating pickled eggs. <laughs> when you go back to having almost normal... Cravings. Ice is apparently a common one. Mm-hmm. People crave ice. There is actually something like that, that you that you're lacking when you when you crave ice though, but I can't remember what it is. If you know what it is, let us know. <laughs> Who knows? <clears throat> there it is, there can, is something mean, that your, your body's actually lacking. I'm sure. But what though? Because ice is just frozen water, and I doubt I, you're lacking well, water I know, to the degree. I know, but it's like it's just one of those things that you, your body like craves. I don't even think it's necessarily the fact that your body's like, I need ice. It's just you don't know what you're craving, so you're like, ice. Oh well. I don't know. Pregnant. Maybe I'll find out one day. <laughs> people who've had children, let us know what your craziest pregnancy craving was. And uh, don't say pickled eggs. Yeah, anything but pickled eggs. Pickled, or, pickled or ice. tuna and scrambled <laughs> egg together. P- pickled ice, that's just essentially where you take the brine. Trim something pickled and then just freezes. <laughs> nah. You say that, but you know when we when we try for a a bear and that, and you're heavily pregnant, you'd be like, oh, do you remember? Do you remember two years ago when, yeah. like, I was you were talking about pickled ice for a joke, and like, you know, I really fancy some pickled ice. No. 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 Just no. Oh, then tell me, give me some Christmassy stuff to talk about, because that's the other, the other half of this video. We haven't even spent long talking about beta today. We've but, just been talking shit. But basically. that's because, <laughs> what else can you say apart from, it's nice? I'm sure that I mean? people who actually know, like, actual things about beer could probably say a lot more about it, but we're very thick. It's not, I wouldn't even say that, I'd just say we have a very rudimentary knowledge yeah. of what goes into beer. So, like, I couldn't tell the difference between certain kinds of hops. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I understand, like, the palate of it and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I was going to say something, but it's gone. So, what is... Uh, we've talked about your favourite Christmas lunch meat. Yeah. But what... Not, not five-bird roast. Yeah, anything but a five-bird roast or a three-bird I'd like to say how far they can push that. Like I know we're going, I know we're going off like, down the rabbit hole again, but like, I wonder what is the upper limit of birds you could have for one can roast. stuff inside of each other yeah. for a roast. Like a 14-bird roast or something. Poor, poor turkey. You know what I mean? It's got like chicken, turkey... Ostrich. Ostr- ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> Emu, sparrow. <laughs> 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 Seagull. <laughs> Pigeon's meant to be okay. Yeah, it's not that I would ever have it. Apparently, but yeah. I've never tried it personally. So, 
Talked about the favourite lunch mate. It's probably better than seagull. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, seagull might be amazing, but no one's ever tried it before. I bet seagull tastes fishy. Like, it's salty. Like how, you know. How fish taste? Yeah. Probably not. Well, they live out, like, on the ocean for large periods of time. Right. And they eat fish. So, you know what you eat. can I ask you my question now? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just derailing it. How seagulls taste? Yeah, but this is the thing. Obviously, maybe someone if people, people, people who know me, let us know. people who know me know that this is what I'm like. But you live with me; you should expect me to de- derail any conversation we I have. Do, in but there. not when we're making videos. <laughs> so, talked about your favorite Christmas lunch, mate. Yes. What's your favorite Christmas food? Food. Like in general, it can be like starter, main, dessert, like any item of a Christmas dinner that's your favorite bit. Now. See, this is the thing. The obvious answer that I think a lot of people would go for would be pigs and blankets. I'm not going to do that. Oh. They're very high on the tier list, don't get me wrong. They're definitely in the top three. But I think goose fat, um, roast potatoes are like something else, a next level. They're pretty good. A good roast potato needs to have a nice crisp on the outside and it needs to be fluffy on the inside. And for that, they can't be too big and they need to be cooked, right? Because if they're too big, you don't get fluffy all the way through and at some point it's just a lump of potato. Or they don't, they have too much surface area to get crispy on any sort of depth. Mm. So they need to be like, they can't be too big. It's got to be like this size maximum, right? And yeah, goose fat just means they crisp up lovely. And they taste amazing. Good answer. I would have to say mine is... Roasted parsnips. Oh, God, no. I mean... Because I, I would pick pigs and blankets, but like you said, that's the obvious choice. And, like, I absolutely love roasted parsnips, and the only way they get any better is if it's honey roasted parsnips. Yeah, okay. I can get away like, with that. Like, I could just go to town on them. I could just have the, a big pile of them for my Christmas dinner, really. See, so I'm, I'm sort of... Um, less so now. More so, actually, since I've met you. But um, in my youth... I was quite a veggie phobe. Um, oh, yeah, you're yeah, getting into the veggies. Yeah, but even even then, during my veggie phobe years, like things like honey roasted parsnip, I could eat and that and get away with, and I quite enjoy them, but it's something I could only have in small amounts. And even now, I couldn't just, I couldn't sit and go to town on them. <laughs> but I could have a few on my Christmas dinner and enjoy them. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I can, so, I can get behind that. Yeah, so leading off from that, another. Related question, what's the last thing you would ever want to see on your plate at Christmas dinner? Like, again, it can be the, like, through starters or mains or desserts, like, anything. Like, what is the worst thing in the world for Christmas dinner for you? Sprouts. Sprouts? Sprouts. I like sprouts. Hashtag fuck sprouts. Unpopular opinion, I like sprouts. I'd say I think sprouts are like Marmite again. I think you either you either like them or you, you really dislike them. I'm in the really dislike camp. But I know for a fine fact, me mate Bingham... Right, he was telling us before uh, when we were out, we'd had a drink, and uh, he was telling us, he was like, "I can't wait to get home, um, because I bought all this stuff um, to make me dinner with when we get back." And uh, this was like ten o'clock at night, but he was telling us he bought all the stuff for like a Sunday's dinner, and he was just going to make himself a Sunday's dinner at like ten o'clock <laughs> at night when he got home, right? And he was like, "I've got," he was like, "I've got to get massive bag of sprouts from us there." And he's like, "I'm going to roast them up lovely," and do you know what I mean? And I was like, "I don't like sprouts." But the way he was talking about sprouts, I was like, yeah, man, sprouts. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, so. But when I think was the they... last time you ate a sprout, though? Because I think your taste buds do change. Not long enough ago. <laughs> of course not. I think it's the thought for people more than anything. No, do you know what it is? It's the... Just like a little cabbage. It's not... I can't... It's... It's that, like, sort of sweet tartness to them that I don't like. Do you know what I mean? Because people say like, oh yeah, the sweet, I don't get the, the sweet really. You get that sort of, it's like, ooh, do you know what I mean? And like, I, I can't get past that. I can't get past have that you, or enjoy have it. Have you ever tried them roasted in bacon though? Yeah, but then, right, see that, what you're doing there is you're straw man in the sprout, right? Because you're saying, this. Okay. imagine this horrible thing, right? If I roasted it in something that's absolutely delicious, 
Wouldn't it taste better? Of course it is. You could roast anything and bacon and it would taste better. Yeah, but like, bear in mind, right, you wouldn't touch broccoli until I started cooking it with chilli and garlic and stuff, and now you like broccoli, so... Actually, that's not necessarily true. That just helps the thing, and I'm sorry, ma'am, but like, I know Zach and Bethany are going to agree with me, right? Vegetables I can get away with if they've got crunch, right? And that's that's why I'm more accustomed to them now, because... You don't boil the life out of them. Mom, I'm sorry. I know you just got it from Nana and that's the way she done it and it was good enough for her, but they shouldn't be mush. You poor mom. It's fine. Because this is the thing, just because I'm decrying my mom's ability to to steam veg, right, doesn't mean that I'm saying she's a bad cook. I'll happily go on record and say that the be single best steak that I've ever eaten, okay, including in restaurants and stuff, was made by my mum. Fair enough. And she makes a flippin' hell of a corned beef pie. Like, honestly, when we get married and we have food on, okay, mm -hmm. minimum five corned beef pies. Five. Right? <laughs> How many people minimum. have you come in? Well, no, because this, this is the thing, right? You put food on, okay? If you have one or even two corned beef pies, everyone goes for that first, right? And then some people go without. Mm. And like this is the thing, I'll go. Have a surplus I'd, yeah, I'd, I've surplus. got. I'd go up and I get a slice of corned beef pie and a few other nibbles and stuff, right? Then you sit back down, and you eat them, and you go up and you're like, that corned beef pie was lush. I'll go back for a bit more, and it's gone. Minimum five corned beef pies. Honestly, if you're thinking about getting married, take it from me. Five corned beef pies. Get on with my mum; she'll sort it out. <laughs> oh, don't. <laughs> Maybe cute people. <laughs> so. <clears throat> I think the worst thing for me, it's not like actual dinner related, it's dessert related. And again, a lot of people won't agree with me because it's like a British staple. But I can't deal with trifle. I'm with you. I don't really like trifle. You know what it is for me? It's I'm not a big fan of cold custard anyway, but it's the fact that like... See, I love cold custard. They put these like... Cakey, ladyfinger, bready things inside of and hot mushy. jelly, and then put cold custard on top, and it all goes mushy and oh, oh, nah. For me, for me, for me, I'm not a big fan of jelly, um, but that's because uh, textures put me off things rather than taste. So even though I like the taste of it, the texture makes me feel ill, and because of that, I can't eat it. Even though, like you know, I like ladyfingers and I like. Cold custard, I flippin' love cold custard. I don't like, I can't really eat cold custard. Again, I think it's what I could take, it's too like, I don't know. It's yeah. a little bit like jelly, but it's not. I can't, I can't get away with eggnog either. Just I've never tried eggnog the, before. While we're on the subject of Christmas foods. No, it's minging. Um, eggnog. Oh, what is it called? That drink that you have at Christmas time. Is it a snowball? Snowball, snowballs? yeah. Snowballs? Snowballs are minging. Yeah, they're pretty bad. Like, what is it? What is that? What is it? Let's let's look it up. Oh, I can't because my phone's currently recording this video. <laughs> yeah, I don't like snowballs. You're gonna have to put snowball drink if you just put snowball in. It's what are snowballs made of? Ice, snow, <laughs> water, frozen water. The first thing, it's advocat liqueur. Yeah. Essentially, it's lemonade, advocat, and lime. Yeah. Now, advocat is quite creamy and lemonade is it made of av avocados i feel like it sounds like it's made of avocados no i don't know you said it i don't know <laughs> i know it's advocat and not avocado but like i don't know mm. egg yolks brandy and vanilla so it's essentially like an so, egg it, sort so it's of eggnog with thing. lemon and lime yeah that that yeah. tells me all i need to know yeah, but it's like, like I say, it's like quite a creamy thing, and then obviously adding lemonade into it. Yeah. And it... Just seems like it would instantly curdle. Yeah, and I used to drink snowballs, right, because when I was younger, like too young to drink, like my mum my was always like, oh, you can have one snowball because they're really low alcohol. Yeah, they're, and they're really little. And they're really they? little, yeah. Or it was baby sham, I used to like baby sham. But like when it was snowball, like... I hated it, like I've always hated the taste yeah. and everything about it. But because it was alcohol and because I was underage, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to drink all this. Why didn't your mum just do what any sane person would do and just make you a shandy? 
because I wanted it to be more Christmassy. Because kids. <laughs> but yeah, because it was like alcohol, I was like, no, I need to finish this. And I can't act like I hate it because then I'll never get one again. Do you know what I actually, <laughs> actually like while we're on the subject of uh, Shandy? It's not, it's kind of not Shandy really. Um, Foster's Radler. Have you ever had it? It's just lager cut with um, yeah, it's nice. the lemon and it's just, it's really low alcohol. It's like 2% a bottle. So you can literally, you could go through an entire crate and you'd probably get drunk, but you wouldn't get. Like you wouldn't get wasted. Yeah. Right? But yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. I think we've gone over a lot today, Christmas related. Well, probably more than yesterday, but uh, a sense I can't, of one. I, I can't remember any of it. What we just talked about. What we've just talked about. Yeah, it was favourite. Favourite food. Favorite least food and least favorite drinks. Food. Yeah. 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 And we've not talked about spice, so, <laughs> so yeah. we're getting more Christmassy. <laughs> Do you know why that is? Because I haven't had to listen to probably about three hours of someone talking about spice on the radio today. Yeah, and probably because you're not angry about the crap beer with the beer sand. Yeah. We've had a yeah, good was, beer today. It was, really a, it was a knock-on effect. I was annoyed by naff beer. And you were enraged. You saw red. When you saw that beer sand, you saw red. <laughs> what I needed was a nice spice joint to calm down. <laughs> Don't say things like that. <laughs> hey, I'm of course joking. <laughs> I hope so. Do you know what it is, right? It, it terrifies the life out of me. <laughs> stuff like that. Because, like, spice is supposed... Uh, well, I mean, we're, we're now we're talking talk. about spice again. <laughs> we can't. It's meant to be synthetic cannabis, but it's, like, a million times stronger or something. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. That's not the real it's number. Actually but it's actually a million times stronger. But it's, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's some stupid amount. And you see people... As, I remember watching some small documentary about it where people were on it, and they do just look pure mound. They look, like, just completely out of it, like zombies. Anyway, we're not talking uh, we're about We're not going to go into it again because you're going to stop watching the videos because you don't want to hear about spice anymore. <laughs> so I, I came here to listen to you talk about crap Christmas. beer and not flipping and Christmas, not not like... designer drugs called spice. <laughs> well, it's a shame really because I think as a, as a name for a drug, spice is pretty good, but only because it reminds me of spice from June. So, yeah. Well, are we promised that we're not going to talk about spice yeah. anymore about you, you, You'll have not even seen June, have you? No. Or read the book. No. Just a kid, man. So young. Anyway. We'll, we'll watch June sometime. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I think that's that's about it. All finished. Yeah. We didn't even do this straight after our last goal. But yeah, that's because today's was really good. Oh, yeah. rating. Rating before oh, we... Oh, yeah. Yeah. You first. Uh, I'm going to give that eight Christmas crackers out of ten. A solid eight. You know what, right? I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say it was nine stockings out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. I think nine's, like I say, because I don't think I'm going to give any of them a ten. So I think nine's the highest they can shoot for. Like, I do think, like, I was toying with eight and a half, but, like, yeah, a good, like, a, a strong eight. Strong eight. Strong eight crackers out of ten. Well, I think that's about all we've, uh... We've got in store for this video. Yeah. We've kind of exhausted all of our Christmas talk and all of our beer is gone. But thankfully, praise be to Santa <laughs> that, like, you know, today's was really nice. So, once again, if you come across this, buy it. Yes, it's worth definitely. it. Definitely. Fordham Route 1 Session IPA. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. So, yeah. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let us know in the comments. You know what your favourite, least favourite Christmas food and drink is. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for hopefully something of the same calibre. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Anyway, until then, happy holidays, stay festive and we're out.